The Reebok CrossFit Nano 9. This shoe has received multiple construction updates compared to the predecessor, the Reebok CrossFit Nano 8. And with those construction updates, I found a lot of things to like about this shoe. Let's talk about four of my favorite pros. Number one is I love the split outsole down here. So as you can see, there's a split going through the midfoot of the outsole. That's to promote stability, but also comfort. And I thought that was very true. I thought this was a pretty comfortable shoe to run in. It doesn't really have that like slapping feeling like most salad outsole cross trainers can have. My second pro is the redesigned flex weave outer construction. Has a little bit more of a stretch to it in my opinion and it feels very maneuverable and very comfortable. I think if you're looking for kind of an all around shoe that's gonna feel good, promote comfort and stability, I think this flex weave is a pretty dang good bet. My third pro with the Nano 9 is the heels construction. So similar to the Nano 8, they've kept that booty design so the booty separates from the flex weave outer. I think that's both supportive and comfortable. But what I really like about the new heel construction is that they've gotten rid of that plastic heel cup. In my opinion, the plastic heel cup is kind of gaudy and unneeded, especially when the boot of the shoe provides enough support. So what they've done instead is they've wrapped up this plastic TPU layer kind of from the outsole over the midsole and it goes up on both the medial and lateral side and that's gonna provide that stability where the plastic heel cup used to be. For me personally, I'm a huge fan, plus it looks pretty aesthetic. My last pro with this model, and probably the biggest defining feature of all these construction differences, is the additional midsole up here. So as you can see, we have kind of a foamish midsole towards the front of the forefoot on both the medial and lateral side. That promotes overall comfort of this model. So that's what's gonna help you run a little bit longer, wear more on a day-to-day -day basis and not have any of that kind of four foot slap that causes that discomfort over long durations. I've been wearing it on my commute, which is like one to three miles, and these shoes are pretty dang comfortable, and I would not wear my Nano 8s for my commute. So I think that's a move in the right direction. But now let's dive into the cons. So in terms of cons, I didn't notice anything glaringly wrong with this shoe. It's kind of a best of all worlds in terms of comfort and stability. So I'm gonna nitpick at a couple things that I think can be problematic for other athletes when using this shoe. So the first being the bunching of the material up here towards the toe box. So this is pretty common in other cross trainers that have a wider toe box to promote full toe splay. And when you pull it fully tight, you do get a little bit of bunching material up here. Now they have made this model a little bit more slim than the Nano 8. So I don't think it's gonna be as problematic, but it is something to kind of keep in mind when pulling these fully tight for some athletes. My next nitpick is gonna be the design on the outsides. So if you're not a fan of the vector design of Reebok, then that could be a pretty big turnoff, seeing as that's pretty much the whole lateral side of the shoe. I don't really mind it, but if you're a Delta fan and you kind of like how that old classic Reebok Nano used to look with just that clean Delta on the side, then I could see that being an issue for you. My third con is how long these laces are. So for many athletes, you can obviously just switch them out and get shorter laces, and that's not really a problem. But if you don't feel like going through that trouble, expect to be double knotting these puppies. I have to double knot them even when laced up all the way up through the sixth eyelet up here. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind that the laces are freaking long. Now in terms of overall durability, we can't really say if it's gonna last six months to a year because, I mean, the general population hasn't really had them for that long. So from other nanos and looking at how this shoe is built and the new construction changes, it doesn't seem like there are gonna be any immediate durability issues. I haven't really foreseen anything in my tests, but again, we're not really gonna know until we all beat the hell out of them for a half year to a year. So when it comes to price, you can expect to pay around $130 for a brand new pair. Now, if you're used to buying cross trainers, especially for newer models with bigger companies, that falls right in line of what to kind of expect. 130 is kind of the baseline between bigger models like the Nanos that come out once a year. So again, price, it's kind of to be expected. It's gonna be right around 130. Obviously, you could find more cost efficient shoes, but if you want the latest and greatest, then you're gonna be paying 130 for the Nano 9. Performance, the question that's been on everybody's mind, how do the Nano 9s perform? So in my opinion, these are one of my favorite Nano models from the last few years. Why is that? Well, for one specific reason, and that is that they tie that bridge between comfort and stability. I like the Nano 8s, don't get me wrong, they're very stable, but when running and doing jumps, they're not the most comfortable. The wider toe box isn't really accommodating for my slimmer foot, and there's a lot of slap with that toe when doing a lot of sprints and different forms of runs. So the reconstruction midsole does a great job at supporting a little bit longer runs, more sprints, and also just walking in general. I love to wear these for my commute even, and that's very rare for cross training shoes that are a little bit more on the stable side. So in terms of all around gym performance, I don't really have any big knocks against this model. It does a pretty good job at bridging the stability with the comfort. So I think for a lot of folks who are looking for that bridge and looking for that kind of hybrid shoe to match all of their needs, the Nano 9 is gonna be a pretty dang good bet. 
So now let's chat sizing and fit of the Reebok CrossFit Nano 9. This is a size 10 model. I'm a pretty true size 10 in all of our cross training machine reviews. I wear 10s and also in Reeboks, I'm typically pretty good in the 10. So now let's see how this fits. I'm gonna slide in my foot. So as you can see, you got the booty design back here. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's pulled really tight, just to show you the nitpicking of the toe bunching up here. So as you can see, we got a little bit of overlap down there. And that's if I'm pulling them fully tight. So I'll pull them how I would normally wear them. And to show you how much shoe string comes along with the shoe, there's a lot of string here. We have string dragging down here on the ground. So I have to double knot. Now I'm gonna unlace and actually use this top eyelet up here just to show you that even with the top eyelet laced, there's still a fair amount of shoelace and you're probably gonna need to double knot it. So let's lace up the sixth eyelet up here just to kind of give you an idea of how they fit. Normally I don't use a sixth eyelet just because I don't really find it useful and it's not really that comfortable and doesn't really make a difference for me personally. So fully lacing them up, obviously a little bit less shoestring, but even then that's a little bit baggy for my liking, especially if you're doing rope climbs or things like that. So you gotta double knot them and that's probably gonna be your best bet at resisting any form of unlacing during a workout. So now how do these physically fit? We got about a half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch up here towards the toe and that's hitting the end of the shoe. Personally, that's like my sweet spot because I like having a little bit of room just to prevent any toe jamming and any form of jump movement or any kind of movement where I'm really pushing my toes into the ground. So that's kind of a perfect true size fit in terms of length. In terms of toe splay and the toe box up here, I'm fully splaying my toes, no limitations, no real additional room. So they have I decrease the size of the forefoot a little bit in this model and I find that to be really awesome because I have a narrower foot so I love a more athletic fitting shoe. So that might be a little bit of why I like this model and how it fits a little bit more compared to previous models. But all in all, I think it's a pretty true fitting shoe. If you're true to size and your normal shoe size, then I think you should be pretty safe getting the same with the Nano 9. So now let's talk about the construction of the Reebok CrossFit Nano 9. Let's make our way from the toe to the heel and run over all the construction differences of this model. So up here towards the toe, we have a little bit of a leather layer underneath the flex weave on the toe. That's pretty great for resisting any form of durability or abrasions that you might get with toe dragging and things like burpees. Up here on the toe itself, we have an outsole layer that wraps up and it's a little bit wider. We don't really have that narrow lip up here, which is pretty great for resisting any form of durability issues of lipping. I think that's a great feature, especially since there is a break here in the midsole. I think that's really useful to have on the shoe. So making our way to the midsole, we have a more of a compressible foam midsole here. That's newer to this Nano compared to other models. Gives a little bit more reactivity up here on the toe. We obviously have that newly reconstructed, kind of updated flex weave outer construction. And as you can see, there's a little bit more of a stretch to it. Previous models have had flex weave and it's a little bit maneuverable, but I think that this one is a little bit more accommodating to fitting with the shoe and kind of fitting with the foot a little bit better. So working our way to the midfoot itself, Six eyelets that run up. Similar to the Nano 8, we have these extended little bits over here on the midfoot. We have that booty six eyelet up here, and we have a vector design on the outside. On the medial and lateral side of the shoe's midsole, we have that TPU that comes up and over, and that provides a little bit of stability. It's a little bit firmer. I think it's also pretty good for rope climbs. The Nano 8 had more of a flatter midsole, and I think that this is actually kind of useful for really wrapping that rope in rope climbs. Now, will it be super useful for everybody? Yes and no, I'm not too sure yet. I like that the Rope Pro midsole does come up here a little bit more on the medial side. So now making our way to the heel, we have that booty design similar to the Nano 8. And again, we have that six eyelet up here on the edge of the booty itself. We have a little bit of separation from that flex weave outer and the boot. We have a little bit more stability though in this boot compared to previous models. Since the cup comes up a little bit higher and this is angled in, I didn't really notice any kind of heel slip. And that's typically a problem in booty shoes, but I think Reebok does a really good job at kind of remedying that with this construction on the heel. So working our way to the back of the heel, this is pretty important. It's a tiny detail that often gets overlooked. So there's a split here in the plastic TPU material back here on the heel. That's to promote a little bit more of a comfortable ride. Making our way to the outsole, the bottom of this shoe got a slight rework compared to the Nano 8. We still have that meta split up here, so if you really like to dig those toes in and grip the floor, you still get that with this shoe. But again, one of my favorite things about this model is this split in the outsole material. That's meant to provide a separation between the toe and the heel. So when you have a flatter shoe that has that kind of that whole flat outsole, you kind of get a little bit of slap and it's not the most comfortable to run in. This kind of helps remedy that problem. So all in all, I think those are 
are the biggest construction callouts worth noting on the Reebok CrossFit Nano 9. I know there's a lot of changes and it's a lot to take in. And if you're a True Blue Nano 8 fan, it might be a little bit hard to swallow that this is so reworked. But I think the construction updates are made in the right direction for what's going to be best for all around for most athletes. And that wraps up my review of the Reebok CrossFit Nano 9. In terms of overall performance, I thought this shoe performed pretty great and I think Reebok has made some good steps in the right direction in terms of the construction updates that this model received. If you want to read my full thoughts on this shoe and all the logistics that go into making this with thoughts from Rich Froning and Annie Thorstadter, make sure to check out our article in Google Barbend and Reebok CrossFit Nano 9.